But twenty years in the Legion will make a boy a man. Twenty years in the Legion and they will give you land. Twenty years in the Legion you'll always have a home. Twenty years in the Legions of Rome. Oh, he's... Hey, everybody. How's Meridia is doing tonight? You know, that is my favorite SCA song. Thanks, Sir Jan. Sir Jan Jemunson wrote that. He's my Squire brother. Squire brother. He's a, or was my Squire brother. Now it's a fantastic night. All right. So welcome to How It Works. I'm sorry. Welcome to How Shit Works, the show where we look behind the scenes of how things work in the kingdom of Meridia. I am one of your hosts. I am Graf Ort von Brandenburg. I'm a knight, a pelican, and a royal peer with a mug full of opinions. So, as always, I'm joined by my tag team partner, my partner in crime, my dear friend, Sir Eric Martell. Hi, everyone. I'm Sir Eric Martell. I'm a knight, a landed baron. I am the knight of kittens, the bringer of joy. And I've also written some songs that are not for public consumption. Maybe you'll hear some of them, but you probably won't. Tonight's episode is the first episode in series five where we're going to chat with Harold. Our guests tonight are Dame Flanet Nihaney and Maestra Fiora Valori. If you would please introduce yourselves, tell us in the audience a little bit about yourselves. Remember, some of our audience may not be familiar with you or your work. Flanet? Well, hi, I'm Flanet Nihaney. I've been in the SCA for Gosh, now 21 years. Wow, time flies. Um, I started out um, dabbling in all kinds of things. I did photography um, and then um, a herald in the barony of Brinmatic said, hey, you've got a loud voice. Come be a, a, a tourney herald. And that's how it all got started. Uh, hi, I'm Maester Fiora Valori. Um, also been playing around 20 years. Um, and uh, I hail from the southeastern part of the kingdom from the Shire of Worth Castle in Savannah. And um, I got the heraldic bug tennis years ago um, and have held several uh, offices, local and kingdom. And I'm now currently the kingdom uh Principal Harold Beacon. Welcome to the show, both of you. It's great to have you here. I know uh, Dame Planet and I have worked together very closely over the years. I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Your, yeah, I have. Oh, well, it took uh, approximately three minutes for me to stumble all over um, my tongue in the, in the not so fun way. I'm looking forward to getting to know you better, Laura, <laughs> and working with you in the future. Um, Tonight's words for the for the drinking game are Laurel, as in Laurel Sovereign of Arms by Flonit, um, Staff, as in Beacon Staff by Fiora, and L-O-A-R by Mistress Adriana because she hates <laughs> my liver. Um, the drinking game, as always, is when you hear one of those words in the show that is not part of a question, Eric, no matter how hard you try to shove it in there, then you drink if you wish to participate. Our drinking game is always is an opt-in game. We're not trying to make anyone drink, nor are we trying to make anyone drink alcohol. If you don't, if you want to participate in the drinking game, but don't want to drink alcohol, drink anything you'd like, except for bleach. We oppose that. Um, or anything else is going to har harm you. All right. So, um, for the record tonight, I'm drinking a Ubalibre out of my fantastic Touch pottery mug. Um, and as always, we'd like to thank Between Two Peers for allowing us to be a licensed franchisee of the So let's get started with the drinking words. But first, let's all take a moment to notice that Ulrich said, the words don't count if I ask them in a question, which obviously means that if I put them in a declarative sentence, they do count. <laughs> Can we please get a definition of those uh, words, please? 
Well, uh, I'm going to jump and take Beacon Staff because that was my focus when I was Beacon. Um, basically, it means all of those deputy heralds underneath the office of Beacon. So. <laughs> and uh, Laurel, short for Laurel Sovereign of Arms, um, is the title of the most uh, top herald in the society um, and uh, who I report to. All right, one of y'all gonna one of y'all are gonna have to explain L O A R to me because <laughs> I see it all the time. But it is an acronym that I would have to make stuff up for. It's a the letter of acceptances and returns. It's published every month by society and it's uh, published of what um, armory and names have been passed and what have been returned. And there's usually a cover letter that has extra stuff, like we changed this rule and et cetera. Yeah. Huh. Okay, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Ish. Ish. <laughs> All right, so getting into that. So we kind of had a, a little bit of this conversation going into mm -hmm. the show. Of all the offices in society, the Herald seem to have the most coded names. We use using code names. Um, <laughs> As opposed to like Kingdom Herald, Beacon, Beacon Herald, or Society Herald is Laurel so Sovereign of Arms, where we have Lantern and Torch and Wombat Herald. I don't understand all this stuff. Can, could you guys possibly help me out with that? With it? <laughs> well, sure. Um, well, um, it takes a lot of people to help Beacon do the job um, because there's lots of different things going on. You have people who take care of submissions that come in from the local heralds of your local group and from also other sources because you don't have to necessarily use your local herald, especially if your group doesn't have one. Um, and then you have the herald below that works with him who then sends those submissions up the chain to society for them to then do their thing to decide, yes, did this pass or did it not? Um, and then, of course, you've seen Torch Herald. Well, that's the Court Herald. See how that works? <laughs> um, our lovely now Baroness Sarah. Uh, Trumpet is lists, you know, hello, hello, we're coming. You know, here come the heralds. One by one. Anyway, <laughs> Yora. I, I believe it was, um, it's a, it was Meridian tradition. I'm not, you know, I do not know the history of how it came to be, but to use um, the, the sort of flame theme for mm -hmm. our heraldic titles, not for all of them, but for, for most of them, yeah. um, beacon um, and torch and lantern and, um, I, I don't know how that started, um, but my short answer is heralds are extra, so we like fancy names, and we and this is across kingdoms. Like Glen Alban has um, jewel or stone themed mm -hmm. names for their heraldic deputy uh, deputies, um, like Onyx and Ruby. Um, so it's uh, that's how we yeah that's how we uh, have our our special names. That's Any other awesome. offices that you've heard that you want a definition for? Not yet. It's time <laughs> towards the end of the show. Okay. Right. Right. We reserve the right to go back to any question and oh, clarify cool. all of the things we don't understand, which will be a lot. So I know this next question is a big ask, given the number of deputies, and we just sort of touched on it. But can you give a, us a rundown of the Meridian deputies in the Herald office? What are they called? We pretty much touched on that. But what are their responsibilities exactly? We've covered some of those already, Ish. but I, I know there are others. Ish. Um, yes. Uh, so there are 13 um, uh, deputies. We have uh, 14 if you include Spark, which is the title for uh the Beacon Replacement Herald, um, and uh, um, we used to have um, Arbor, uh, who did our web 
page, um, and that actually was recently dissolved to uh, basically that job now is going to be um, under the Kingdom Web Minister just to consolidate everything. Um, we have um, Bagatelle. Bagatelle is the herald that um, is in charge of making sure there's enough regalia mm -hmm. on hand for the crown. Um, doesn't have to make it all, but you know, requests uh, people to, to make it. Um, Candle Herald is uh, our new Herald orientation um, and mentoring Herald. So if you're new, if you want to learn more about Herald, that's Herald who you go to. Mistress Flanet focused, uh, touched on our submission Herald, Cypher, um, who, who receives the submissions and the money and Pennon, who then um, makes the final decisions on those submissions. Um, Lambent Herald is our Herald who comments on society level on different other kingdoms letters. So it's the Meridian voice of commenting um, uh, for the society. Mm -hmm. And Lantern Herald is in charge of heraldic studies and fostering that in the kingdom. Uh, Lucius Herald is my reporting deputy. Uh, and she collects all of the local Herald reports and puts it together in a report for me to look at. Um, Lighthouse Herald is uh, our field Herald, um, coordinating Herald's, voice Heralds for, for event, events like tournaments and such. Uh, Papyrus Herald is um, a special projects right now, um, scanning and archiving um, old paperwork we had found that was pre 2006, pre um, when we started scanning stuff. So she's been scanning um, all of those so we can keep that archived. Um, Silent Herald is the one who does the um, sign language for courts and Torch Herald for um, running courts. Clerk of Precedence maintains our OP and Roll of Arms. And Trumpet Herald does the lists. And that's our staff. That's a lot of heralds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, wow, that's a lot of heralds. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> I couldn't keep up with my family if I had that many people in it. All right. <laughs> No, I, I'm teasing. I realize they all do a fantastic job of what they do. They all have their, their, their role, and I, and I appreciate them. We're just trying to bring a little humor in. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the qualifications for Beacon Principal Herald? How does someone get chosen for that? <laughs> well, <laughs> it comes down to who really wants to be able to be in charge of 13 people um, and communicate with society. But pretty much we look for somebody who is friendly, um, likes talking to people because you've got to work with a team. And, and usually when we were meeting um, in person, we would usually, um, after Crown List was all over and all of that was done, we would have a social and get to meet everybody and talk to people mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, you don't necessarily have to know either book heraldry or voice heraldry. You don't have to know it all to be Beacon, um, but you do have to have a general knowledge of basic heraldry, um, you know, who's doing what and what their office is, and then keep everybody organized and on going forward and working with who they're supposed to work with. And sometimes you get three um, resumes and letters of intent, and other times you might only get one or none, <laughs> as in if that's happened in the past. So it just depends. A lot of it's hurting cats. Yes. In a good way, but like you, you've, you're – and, and I think it takes uh, a certain sense of um, also, uh, I mean, management, you know, you're working with people um, yep. and something that actually I, I, I look to Flannet as an example 
um, from her time was uh, she was a very good motivator and encourager. So, um, which I think is important for the office. So how much of your personal time do you spend on the office and, and what do you think takes up the largest percentage of that time? Mm. Jenny, you're in the office now. <laughs> <laughs> it really depends. Um, mm -hmm. it, it honestly, it, it's, it's not as bad as like Pennon or Cypher who, it's almost like a part-time job dealing with all the submissions and paperwork. Um, when it comes to pennant kind of come or beacon, it kind of comes in waves. Maybe um, the mm -hmm. crown has requested information about a new award. And so you're doing research and you're trying to get all that together. Um, it does every quarter bump up when I'm going through reports um, because then I send in my report. So I've got, I read through everybody's reports. Um, I'd say, you know, um, between 10 to 15, maybe 20 hours a week, just really depends. Honestly, it's hard to gauge because there might be a, more time if just, you know, plague times, it's it's thrown everything kind of askew. Yeah. <laughs> but um, a lot of answering in instant messages and emails, uh, make it, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Plague time has changed everything. I don't understand. It's it's currently April, October, is it December ish, January of twenty twenty something. I don't no. understand anymore. Uh, yeah, it's it's been been special. Um, so, right quick, I wanted to let the audience know that if you have any uh, any questions for our guests. Uh, drop those into the comments, either on YouTube or on Facebook, wherever you are, and we will get to them at the end of the show. Uh, Graf and Katarina will collect those, and at the end of the show, we'll we'll put put those into our feed and get them asked. Um, so get that out there for us, and we will make sure we we try and get to it. All right. So it seems like a very paperwork intensive office. There's a lot of reports, a lot of things like that. What kind of reports are you responsible for and in what ways do your deputies help? Because I know they help. Well, you know, it's because of the computer and and all of that, it has helped speed up the process. We don't have to keep all of that paperwork anymore because now, even now, um, since um, Fiora took over and everything, um, the Cypher Herald, incoming Herald, will then take the submissions. You can even do them online and send them. Or if you do send in actual paper, he's going to scan them, correct any things that need to be corrected, and then poof, they're created into a, a document and shipped up and no more piles of paper, trust me. Nine foot lockers worth of paperwork were found. And that was just yeah. pre-2006. Yes. So, yeah. Um, the, the, nine the, foot lockers? Nine yeah. foot lockers. They I were still in have, Earl Raven's barn. Yeah. I, I had papyrus. Um, I... I I, and I had them initially, and about half of them are now with Mistress Amelin, who's Papyrus now. Um, and the <laughs> oh so slow process of scanning all of those. Right. Um, but yeah, and and I still have paperwork um, actually from when I was penning, um, because as Planet said, like we've gotten mm -hmm. we're scanning more and more, and. Um, society has gotten more uh, streamlined with sending in, yeah. you don't have to send an actual paper to them anymore, uh, which is really wow. nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Makes our job much easier yeah. and everybody else. Yeah. And, and so with reports, the, the deputies, my deputies each um, send in a report. I read those. And then I send in a report to Laurel every quarter, a uh, copy to um, the Crown and Seneschal. But again, it's all email at mm -hmm. this point. So, um, 
That's all so, we're required to keep really is just copies of those and they get transferred up. We use Dropbox and other forms of transferring things so that the incoming and the outgoing all know where what they're supposed to be doing. Awesome. So, over the past decade or so, it's become a lot easier and quicker to get a name or device submitted and approved. Is that because as you were talking about, we've gone electronic. Is there a different process or is it a combination? Um, it's, it's the same process, but technology. Um, so when this first started, um, you know, when the society first started and they were doing these, um, basically every, so every kingdom um, each month creates a letter of intent with all the submissions they wish to get decided on. And back in the day, that would be printed out uh, several copies mailed around the world to each kingdom and each kingdom speaking or whoever would comment, mail it on. And then finally it would end up um, at society. And um, around 2006 is when Oscar, the online um, system for commenting and response was created. <laughs> so all of that is done on this, that website. Um, the commenting is all electronic. We upload the information. So there's no more paperwork being mailed around the world. Um, it's all done electronic. And that's why you can get, you can get a response back, something passed in like six months, even depending, yeah. um, whereas it would take over a year previously. And there are exceptions to the rule sometimes. It just depends on how researched the name and the device are, or the arms. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I feel like before we go to the next question, that I should make a declarative statement that <laughs> Laurel and Laurel are probably very upset about us not reading the L and will not read the LOAR unless Laurel and Laurel hear us talk about them. <laughs> Uh, well, here, here's to Beacon and her staff. So, and to Laurel, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> My co host is a poopy head. <laughs> but he likes kittens. Come on. He does. Oh. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. I got to figure out where I am now. Oh, I wanted to, I wanted to do a quick follow up um, to that last question. So, you talked about. Um, it can, take, it can take more time or less time. So, you, and you said it depends on how researched that that particular name is. So, mm -hmm. are there are there ways to get through faster if you're just pick, if you're first picking your name and you want to get one get a name or device quickly? Are there are there I don't want to say cheat codes, but certain things you can pick that will be easier to get by. It depends. It really does depend on um, how many letters there are to look at and how quickly. Because remember, we only used to have 15, 16, 17 kingdoms. Now we have 20. And aren't all the principalities lumped in with their particular kingdom, Fiora? Um, I, I believe that's still the way that yeah. they're doing it. So you've got 20 kingdoms, and if your average submission, even before um, the plague, uh, was 12 to 14 pieces of business, web, and that's divided up between either arms and names or just names or just arms, the, those who volunteer to look at all these and go, Yes, no. Well, that's not going to work because based on all of the rules that we have. So some that are well researched and have the documentation in it can go quicker because they're going, oh, yeah. One, two, three, four. That's good. Poof. And it okay. goes through the process. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So how is your office or your office duties? How that have they changed since the pandemic began 20 years ago last year, back in March? <laughs> so not as much has changed for the beacon, um, for the heraldic office as say perhaps the marshalette where 
there's just been, you know, no chance to do activities or anything. Um, so finding more creative ways to keep that portion of the SE engaged. Um, when it comes to a lot of stuff we do, like our submission process and everything is already online. We already had our online monthly online meetings. Um, so there's not a whole lot that's changed, except the big thing is, of course, our virtual courts, which has been amazing because, mm -hmm. and most kingdoms are doing that, but not all kingdoms are, are doing court business during the plague. So um, that, and the people behind that, um, um, Ellen and Sarah, like they, they, yeah. they've done an amazing job. And I, perhaps future crowns, if something happened, that could be implemented once we're out of plague, but something happened and they, you know, needed to do a, a award virtually, perhaps that might still be kept mm -hmm. around. Who knows? Um, I honestly, the big thing is with the heraldic office is not what we've added, but what's not happened. Um, the, the crownless mm -hmm. and yeah. coronations, um, beacon is a fair witness is usually there to help or at least just observe and be part of the ceremony. And of course we haven't had those. So, yeah. So out of curiosity, has your, has business picked up or dropped off during the pandemic? Um, As, like submissions? submissions. Yeah. Um, we have dropped, but we so far, if I'm remembering correctly, in the last year, we've only had one month where we didn't have any submissions. So we're still getting them. They're just not as many as we normally okay. would. Mm -hmm. But I am pleased to say that we are still, we are still getting them in. So, yeah. Awesome. So, if you're out there and you need a name or device pass, business is a little low. We're here. Go now. Yeah. Right. I was about to say Now's that. The time. Like, like <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing that with a device alteration. I don't even know if device can be altered in any way. So you should do that too. Get it done now before you start yeah. back, because then you'll have time to put it on your shield. <laughs> there or, you, go. you know, maybe not put your name on your shield, but <laughs> you could if you're extra like me. Right. So <laughs> we touched on the, this a little bit in the previous question, but of the changes, what what do you think will stay in place as we go back to in-person SCA? And in particular, which ones sort of like the virtual courts would you like to see change per stay personally? I could see, like Fiora said, um, I could see courts maybe popping up now and then depending on, you know, the crown's needs and wishes, et, et cetera, um, because we've gotten very good at it. And I guess from other people that I've talked to, we've kind of set the example of how courts are done or could be done um, from that standpoint. Um, because we've already worked with social media and that kind of thing. They're very good at being able to um, stream the tourney and everything so people can see and hear what's going on. So we're already, we already have kind of that. Um, they, there might be maybe down the road a way for even the heralds for people to be able to hear the heralds um, do the calls, etc. cetera, um, during a tourney or maybe in, in the introductions of a crown list. But um, that all depends on how much we really want to have modern technology intrude into something that's a bunch of pomp and circumstance and pageantry as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> that that's uh, that's a whole another bag of. <laughs> <laughs> but yep. um, can't really go much farther than that because everything else that we do has already been done online using right. email and you know. Yep shooting things through the through the channels that's fair i know there's been a lot of stuff a lot of folks talking about you know having online courts or live streaming courts or live streaming 
crown lists and stuff. And, and I mm-hmm. think a lot of people don't understand that they're, once you start broadcasting things like that, you, yeah. you get into an, an issue where we have to have uh, um, consent waivers from, from people yeah. to have their, their likenesses. So, you know, literally everyone who, who walk, you know, when we do an online or, or virtual court, everyone is, agrees to uh-huh. be there and, and, and sign up. But if we right. live stream stuff from events, everyone, I believe, I'm not speaking officially here in any way, shape, or form. It is my understanding. Um, it is my understanding that we would have to have uh, anyone who, sh- who showed up would have to have a consent waiver or a waiver mm-hmm. on, on file for that. Um, you all heard him. You have to have a consent waiver. <laughs> well, just like Ladies, excuse have- me for a second, Eric. <laughs> well, just like when we have equestrian at like right. Pool War or even Castle Wars, you right. have to have that waiver signed, et cetera. Right. So, you know, and people's like, what do you mean? One more piece of paperwork? I want to go set up my tent. <laughs> and and a lot of waivers. Yeah. Mm-hmm, it is. You've been there. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So I have the multi part question. So, what is the most difficult, the most fun, and the most rewarding part of your job? So let's, put, let's just put this in three separate questions. Sure. What's the most difficult part of, part of being Deacon, Deacon Harold? Um, it can be hard to, um, for me personally, sure. um, it can be hard to navigate what a crown wishes and what rules are in place and trying to marry and make everyone happy and get everything correct, you know. Um, But that's when I have my awesome staff and other uh, heralds at large to help with that. Um, And then when just resolving any sort of um, interpersonal um, uh, disputes or anything like that, those those can be um, harder. Um, especially when you're friends with people and you're just like, come on guys, get along. Yeah, that, that one is the one that's, that's hard. That's, that's difficult is, is having to let somebody know that a ball has been dropped and you've got to, you know, find a way to be able to pick that, those pieces up and hand it off without, making them feel like the bottom of their world has just <laughs> fallen apart mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. And that, that's a very tough thing to do. I think that's, I think that's almost always the most difficult part of any um, creator or lesser officers or mm-hmm. local officer's job um, is dealing with issues like that. Um, all right. So the most fun, what's the most fun you've had? as Beacon Herald so far. And I'm sorry that most of yours has been during, during the pandemic. <laughs> so I'm not, I've had fun. Um, sure. Honest, uh, for me, um, because I'm both Beacon and a newer peer, it's been really fun to use my position to uplift and let others um, shine and give them the platform to to do awesome things. Uh, for the kingdom. Um, and so, so I think that's for, for, for the plague version that has been the most fun for me. Mine was um, basically being the main herald in charge for 40th year um, in 2018. That I had a blast because not only did we have our crown and our heirs, but we had Trimerises, we had Glenovens, we had the Mid Realm, and we had some other guests, and getting everybody sorted for all the big major activities and what they needed to do. While my head was probably ready to explode by the end of the <laughs> event, I had a blast because there were so many people that were just coming out of the woodwork to say, what can I do? How can I help? And that made it fun because it was a team effort. It really was. There was a bunch of heralds helping. And I hadn't stepped down as beacon yet either. (laughs) Mm. 
Yeah. <laughs> Either time. Hmm. <laughs> you no, had to sit down the first time or the second time? <laughs> uh, that was the first time. I stepped right. down in October of 2018. <laughs> the first time. <laughs> um, okay. And fi- the, the last part of the three-parter, what is the most re- rewarding part of your job? What just gives you that, that warm fuzzy? Um. I guess I kind of already said my my fun and, and rewarding are kind of similar, but um, okay. but yeah. I guess as Beacon, I am um, there. You know the things that I've been able to to approve and enact that have benefited our kingdom. Yeah, that and watch, same for me, but also um, watching others shine finding their niche and just running away with it. And you just stand there going, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what, what is w- the one job that you can think of that always needs extra volunteers to step in and help? And what should they know about it if they're ready to volunteer? Crown list, <laughs> crown list, yeah. card runners, and there really isn't anything they need to learn other than which herald they're going to work with, um, who's going to be calling whichever, whether we're having four areas that start the fighting or getting down to two, that's super, super easy to do. It gives them an opportunity to listen to what the heralds are saying, which really once you get going at it, it's super easy. Um, you, We've even had folks step in to say, hey, I want to try voice heraldry. And they'll walk out with another herald and there will be somebody there with cards to help them read what they're supposed to read. So there's not a lot of extra training involved when it comes to crown list, but that's where we really need the help and somebody to help um, the person who's the um, putting up the list shields on the list tree. That's always nice to be able to have two or three um, hands to help there because in a very hot day that can get really hot and tight yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, I will agree. Voice heraldry is usually, especially like at an event, um, is where we'll need. Um, uh, I'll also say right now with that scanning project I mentioned, um, <laughs> uh, Papyrus could always use um, people to help scan. Um, and if, and she's actually had the job a while. So if you're interested in that office, <laughs> slight plug. Um, the, ben- the the really great thing about that is we get, you know, you don't have to, you know, if you can't make it to an event, you can still do this and and uh, and help us out. Um, but yeah, so come be yeah. a part of Beacon staff. Yeah. So my question, question kind of really dovetails into that. And you are sort of already answered part of it. But what advice would you give someone interested in serving you know if they don't if they don't know how if they're not sure you know um they definitely oh so i would say definitely one place to start is their their group herald Mm -hmm. um their local herald local office um, we also do have our um, lantern education and and specifically candle who is our new herald um uh Harold, um, <laughs> who will, and and this off that office actually is sort of in a revamping phase, and we're 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 um, but we're working on content to help heralds. But I always say, if you want to be a herald, you just say, "I'm a herald," <laughs> uh, and then other people are like, "Ooh," and then we'll come over to you and be like, ask you all these questions and find out what you're interested in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and join the, the Meridian Facebook page, um, yes. the Meridian Herald's Facebook group. That's another good place to start. Come join that. I'll, li- I'll even, you know, answer the questions and we'll pop you in there and you can ask all the questions you want. And there will be somebody there to answer and kind of guide you on your way to becoming one of the co- part of the College of Heralds. <laughs> Excellent. So 
it's about this time that we give a general disclaimer for the audience that, that all of the opinions and statements here are how things work in Meridiates. And if you're from another kingdom, it could work differently. Mm -hmm. As we said before, there will be different names for the various heraldic offices, um, but there could be differences other than that. So if you are from another kingdom, make sure you check with your own heralds before you go wildly assuming herald stuff and go careening off into the list field. Um, <laughs> so now we're going to get to the myths, misconception topics of the night. And as always, I will pick the weirdest and most uncomfortable question right off the bat. And I'm going to start this off by reminding you that it was your friends and colleagues who submitted these statements. So this was not Ulrich and I, because God knows we wouldn't be that we wouldn't know enough. We might have instigated it, but we didn't actually do it. <laughs> that is completely fair. We did not do it, and that's the important part. So the first question, is it true that all heralds are weird, awkward, and insular in their behavior? <laughs> No. That's yeah, she's got a snort. <laughs> but there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, <laughs> heralds can be weird. Yes. <laughs> I think where that myth comes from is that heralds attract a certain type of person who's very interested, like the, who really wants to learn something, information, especially mm -hmm. our book heralds who want to learn all about this Polish names and get very, you know, um, and uh, which is great because we need people like that because we need more research. Um, and, uh, but you, not every herald is like that because like voice heralds tend to be a little more outgoing um, uh, than us more book heralds. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna admit it that we are kind of weird, so <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. So well, first off, okay. first off to that, I want to say there's no one, no one, no one in the SCA who is not a little weird. <laughs> That's very true. None of us are not a, at least a little weird. Oh, don't I'm don't look at me in that tone of voice, Eric. <laughs> I am completely normal. <laughs> Right, where's your, where's your where's your save the kittens hat? Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, there's that, and I also want to say, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, mm -hmm. I have not met a herald who was not exuberant about trying to help. I have not met a now they may try maybe trying to help about this one piece of knowledge that they that they have that is this big and it fits mm -hmm. into this slot, and they know everything they need to know about that slot. But I have not met a single herald that was not exuberant about trying to help. And that's that's a quality that I mean all of us should have. Um, but here's here's my, my favorite uh, misconception. This is actually one, one of y'all. I'm not pulling this one. I'm not I'm not pulling from the, from the further down group yet. But um, it's the misconception that there's there's only one type of herald. I call it the a herald is a herald is a herald concept that what all heralds do everything no no i i know just barely enough about book and book heraldry as we call it um to submit a device or a name but i don't know enough to get it to pass i can give you the rudiments but you want to know about heralding a crown list or heralding attorney come see me i got that there so yes we ha we have collected so much knowledge you know our rules mm -hmm. are i mean you should be familiar if you're going to be at a higher level herald with the rules but no one can know them all and memorize them so um and so that it's impossible to know everything um mm -hmm. and so that's why we have a bunch of different heralds is to everybody you know you can i don't know about polish names we go to this guy who knows about polish names um, I'm not so good at being loud, but, you know, I know that if I need someone to shout across the room, uh, I go to Mistress Planet. So everybody's well, got their their niches. Yeah. You, go, ahead, not, go ahead and say it, all right. Let it out. Nope. Nope. Do it. Do it. So you, I love you, Planet. 
I know. Can you change and screamer? <laughs> no, I don't scream. <laughs> oh, wow. Y'all are lovely. <laughs> I love you, Bonnet. Esther Connell, please, Esther Connell. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> There is a story there. Yes, there is. <laughs> All right. Next question. I'm not sure I'm old enough for this show. <laughs> Are you sure you want this story? It's. I think. It's like, I do. I do. This sounds seems like a, seems like an after show story. So tabard. I'm not scared of it. Tabards are a thing, right? <laughs> like there are tabards. Okay. So maybe you guys <laughs> could explain tabards and 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 like why they wear tabards with the kingdom heraldry or like why even tabards exist just not like what we were just talking about <laughs> well i mean there were tabards in in history if you if you watched the uh you know if you watched the funeral of of prince philip you know i mean there were heralds there and um and they and they would wear tabards with the regalia of the kingdom and so we um, especially at the beginning of the SCA, adopted a lot of the sort of Anglo-Saxon, um, English and French um, heraldic traditions yeah. to our own. And so, um, and you know, that then you know that herald is speaking officially for the kingdom. So you have to be careful what you say when you were in the tavern. Yes, <laughs> very much so. Or like in a crown list, you'll see um, when they're announcing the next... Um, combatant and his consort you'll see them in like Graf Ulrich's tavern in his arms that person is specifically speaking for Graf Ulrich and Grafina Katarina mm -hmm. yeah I hired me a herald I mm -hmm. think that was period we yep. like cookies yes we do we do like cookies mm -hmm. we noted <laughs> all right <laughs> We've had a couple of really fun questions. I'm gonna ask a serious one. And I, okay. I, I think this one's a, important for people to hear. This is this comes from a local Shire here, a local Shire level Herald. Um, sometimes I feel like the local Herald is a little bit redundant. I'm not, it's not like I'm looking for extra work, but any member of the populace can use any of the resources that I, I can. So what function other than, than reporting do I serve? Hmm. So, so often, oftentimes when uh, shires, I, I've been in a shire where populace has run low and you just need a warm body to send in that report. And, and sometimes the heraldic office can fall into that category. Um, but, but yes, anyone can access the resources, but um, having the herald not only sends the report, but they're there to... Um, help with, I mean, Harold's help with the ambiance and the pomp and circumstance. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're doing something yeah. for the Shire, you know, helping with that, or, uh, you know, especially Barony, there's a little more with the bear uh, um, for Barony, but for Shire, um, you also, so you can be someone where they come with questions about the information they found online. Like I, this is kind of odd. How can I help? Um, or how, you know, how can I know more? Um, I think it's more of a personal and being, letting your shire know that you're there to help however you can um and and if you have i mean i'd say definitely reach out to to myself and to um our other kingdom heralds to if you have questions or need more advice um mm -hmm. and I, then we can help you um grow as as a herald um, yeah, pretty much what she said. I mean, you need a local information person, and that's what a local herald can do. You don't have to know everything to hold the office. That's why we have a we have candle um, to help help you learn what to do because if like if another small group reaches out to your group and says hey we're going to host events together do you have a local herald we don't and your group has one you've got somebody who maybe at least can seek information to go okay so we're going to co-host this event what do i as a herald need to do because there might be announcements that need to be you know shouted 
in different areas um, so people know what's going on because maybe they didn't have the funds to have a flyer so people know exactly what time something is going to start. You know, we used to make wake up calls long ago when, <laughs> when I first started and that kind of stuff. And you had to learn how to speak with dulcet tones to wake people up. <laughs> Otherwise, they were going to throw their shoes at you <laughs> and that kind There's of There's an etiquette to that. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yep. So... You know, that's why we need local officers. It's not just to fill paperwork. It also shows the Kingdom Seneschal how um, how big the group is and how they're functioning as well. Because remember, we used to do, Heralds were one of the only offices that reported monthly. And now we've gone quarterly. So, you know, there's all kinds of things that are there. So those monthly reports sound terrible, and I'm really glad you don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> no. Frankly, someone would have told me I have to report every month, and I would have said, not a herald. <laughs> so I'm going to combine a couple of questions here because I think they speak to the same basic uh, question with different variants. And it is people sometimes believe that it's hard to get the type of heraldry that you want passed in the colors that you want with the objects that you want on it, or that you may not even be able to get non-European heraldry at all. Is it really that difficult to get a device passed? No, it really isn't that difficult, but you have to be willing based on the rules that we have that are in place at society. We didn't make those rules up. <laughs> society have has those rules um, and they're changing by the way um, they're always finding new information because of the wonderful internet that we have um, so say you have a um, Scandinavian persona and you just want one animal say a bear on your device and everything it might be easier to have a badge, et cetera, and pass that as a badge because then in the way that the Norse and the Scandinavians did their um, kind of, it's like a long bar at the top and then it kind of curves and has little kind of little arms, little dags coming off of it. That was their heraldry. We've learned more and more as time has gone on about what different eras and what different cultures used to say, hey, it's me on the field 10 feet away. Um, and on the, the non-European, actually, there was uh, just a ruling on the latest LOAR um, that... Uh, to, to kind of coincide with societies dropping um, European from the mission statement, we now, um, when non-European elements used to either be not allowed or be a step from period practice, and now they are changing that. So if you have documentation that um, an image, a piece of heraldry or a charge was used in period outside of Europe, um, then with that documentation, they're going to start allowing that. So there's definitely opened up this flexibility um, mm -hmm. for extra European cultures, for sure. Um, and, and, and in general, a, a good herald's job is to help you get what you want yes. using the, the rules that we have in place. Um, and I always tell everyone, start simple. It's actually easier to do that than to come up with something really complicated. Um, and start with your bear. And if there's somebody else who's got the red bear on the white field, then we can add something to make, you know, give it a change. Um, but I, I, that is our, that is one of the main goals when we're trying to get people to submit stuff is we want to make you happy. And so we yes. will do our very best to do that um, while following our rules. Yes. So I'm actually going to add a quick, follow-up question to this because I actually want to and um, it, it, it's actually something I'm considering. So let's say that you have a, a charge on your device that was really important to you and that you wanted to get it many, many, many years ago when you first passed your device. But to get differentiation, you just threw something on your device 
to make it different. And you've largely ignored that part of your device since then. But you think maybe you would like to change, if possible, that throwaway part while keeping the main part. How would one do that? Well, um, so you can change your device. Uh, that is actually on, on a form. It'll say, is this a new or is this a change? Um, basically, come up with a design. If, if you had to add that to create, to resolve a conflict, then we may, you may need to have something else to right. then, you know, but the rule, depending on when you submitted it, when you had it registered, the rules may have changed. So um, then we would, you would remove that item and start with a conflict check, check with, without it and see what happens. And then if you need to add something, you can add something else that is, that is more relevant to you um, and submit it as a, a change and your device will be, will be changed. Or if for some reason it still comes back as a conflict, we can find out who you're conflicting with and in what kingdom they're con they are in. And we can send a letter to find out if you guys are far enough apart and you're never going to be on the Pensick battlefield or on the Gulf Wars battlefield or at the Great Western War, then and they might be willing to let you conflict. And so there's always that, too. Yes, I was not asking yes. for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Apparently, I'm hitting, hitting the, the, the slightly more serious ones. So this uh, also came from one of your buddies, one of the heralds out there. How do you set the dais? And is there a particular rhyme and reason to how you set the dais? This seems to be something that causes a lot of consternation. I would like to point out to my lovely wife that I did not pick this, this question. This, pick, this question was, was sent in by, by a herald. My wife may have almost uh, banished a herald for continually, continuously changing the way court was set up after she uh, had it set morning. Well, <laughs> go ahead, Fiora. <laughs> <laughs> she can't banish anyone. She can just banish me. I honestly that that's part of the herald of of the heraldry that I am not, not that familiar with. Um, okay. <laughs> so I I I know there's a certain way to do it, but um so Ooh. I, I didn't think it should change. I thought there was a set way of, of there setting it is, up. But here we have the crowns involved. And mm -hmm. while there is a precedence way of setting up the thrones, because we have we usually use precedence of which kingdom are you in who's visiting are your heirs with you those are the bigger questions and then we have the crown's idea of well my best friend who's queen over in this other kingdom is coming and i want her to sit next to me how can we make that work and so we do our best to make sure we follow precedence as much as possible because, well, you know, we're trying to reenact period ideas. And so we try and make our crowns happy as well as follow precedence. And Baroness Sarah has a lovely class about all that. She's got fabulous diagrams, which have really helped, which really helped me at 40th year. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, she and um, Dame Adelaide are, mm -hmm. uh, they have sent me a draft working on sort of consolidating all that information. So then um, it'll be available uh, online. So if uh, someone who's new to doing court could just look it up and be like, okay, who has to go where and who goes in first? And um, so so I'm, I'm excited for that to, to be available mm -hmm. um, when we're done. So. When that's published, can you send it to uh, every person who runs uh, a retinue to every chancellor that steps up as a of chancellor course. so that they can send it, have, have that handed off to their, whoever sets up their thrones for them? 
So, well, we so that every time we don't have to look for Planet or whoever or, or Sarah. Or That's exactly the idea behind it yeah. is that it would but actually be posted can, online yeah. and they could just go online on and the we'll, page. And, see, and hey, that's just what I need and download it, print it, take it with them. Mm -hmm. Trying to make it super easy, you know, one stop shopping. So I'm, I'm attempting to resist asking, but I'm not going to be able to. So in your career as a herald, what is the one thing that the populace continues to do that just irritates the hell out of you? <laughs> and it's okay oh. to say this. This is okay. You, you put a lot of service in for the kingdom and the society at large. And not every interaction is positive. So it's okay for something to have irritated you. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to name names. I'm, I'm good if you oh, just I don't want to call out like Lord Bob crazy. was such a... Um, you can say I irritated, irritated you, Fonda. It's fine. Okay, fine. You've irritated me, but I love you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I'm one of those people that it takes a lot to get me agitated. Because um, usually I'm understanding that they have a lot of questions. And so I just try and be as patient as I can to answer them. Um, so I've worked several, um, several years. I've worked in the Pensac Tent doing consultations and doing drawing and stuff like that. And um, it does still irk me sometimes when somebody comes in and wants like a super fantasy name or device. Cause then I know I gotta, all right, we gotta, I, we, I gotta work hard and be nice to try and get them to focus down to what we can't, you know, what's acceptable right. to, to register. Um, that actually happens more at Pensick, I think than at, at golf. Um, uh, just because Pensick um, is uh, different, oh, but so uh, yeah, but as a good consulting herald, you smile and you mm -hmm. do what you can. So, yeah, I want to thank you guys for that because I cannot imagine what it's like to sit in a tent at a war and wait for a random person to come up and try to get name or device passed and. Some of the things you must have seen, which I will not ask you about now, but at some point in the future at in-person events, I may wander up and say, so I need to hear about this. There was one year when I was in the art tent at Penzik where I, I think I drew like three different devices with hedgehogs. That was the thing. And in one of them, they were holding needles. They were like dueling. It was two. They were dueling each other with needles. So, yeah. All right. So, dueling hedgehogs it seems that that seems kind of kind of funny, kind of kind of extra funny. That sounds. It's actually kind of cute. Yeah. I, yeah. My my mental place done too. Excuse with me. Can I be Ulrich of Mondebidain? <laughs> Which that that was me, by the way. I did that. Right. Or can I? Or can I get a white horse on a green run? A white running horse on a green background because no one has tried that before. Yeah, we have heralds who will try that. I mean, you know, they'll go. Wait, let me look that up. Well, you could get the white horse running, but we can't put it on the green background because somebody already has that. How about purple? Oh, you can't use purple. Purple's for royals. That's a myth. <laughs> That's a myth. Yep. It's one of my favorites. He says that he's wearing purple. And oh, as a right? little peer. Just for the record, I was one I was so one of those people at Gulf Wars that I actually showed up and I was like, This I, I got this done at Gulf Wars and I got my name done at Gulf Wars. And I came up and I said, I would like this. This is not what it looked like, by the way. I wanted I wanted two horses on a black and white per pale. I did not know anything about Meridias. It was not. I didn't know about the horses. Um, I knew about Meridias. I didn't know about the horses. They were like, "Yeah, you can't do that." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, what can I do?" And we just started negotiating colors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We negotiated colors, and I was like, "Well, my knight's colors are black and yellow. Can I do black and yellow?" 
not with horses because my knight had horses. Mm. And I was like, okay, can I do dogs? Well, sort of, but we need another, another point of difference. What's the point of difference? <laughs> and that's that's my question. <laughs> I see how you slipped that in there. <laughs> I'm a very slob. <laughs> you can speak to that one because I'm not a book herald. So there's, um, and I'm going to freely admit that I'm, my brain is not working right now. Um, there's the substantial, we, we, there's differences, uh, ch changes, excuse me, the substantial change. And then a, a, and I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Darn it. I hate it when I do that. It's okay. <laughs> because my brain is not working. Um, basically, a substantial change is just one change, and it's good. Um, usually, you need two, uh, you know, um, instead of two, which is the uh, the minimum amount of differences you need between another piece of armory. Um, and uh, um, so it comes down to often color of the field. Um, so if you submit a badge on a fieldless background, it's automatically a point of difference because it's fieldless. Um, like it's, it's like a transparent background. So it could be any color. So that automatically gets you one, one difference. Um, you could change, um, you could add something. I had, I solved a conflict with my poodle badge by putting a flower on the poodle's shoulder. Um, you well, can, the yeah. The animal. Yeah, you can the change animal. the posture, flip. Yeah. I could talk all night about how, what, you know, I mean, there's pages in Cena, mm -hmm. the, 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 our, our rules on what's difference, you know, what constitutes a difference. Um, but basically you need two points of difference from every other piece of armory that has been registered um, to, to make it clear. Yeah. I found your geek. <laughs> And, and we even have, I mean, we have our online, um, it's all posted online. Every time there's a LOAR posted, um, <laughs> it gets put into the SCA armorial. And so you can, and there's actually a way to, to conflict check using um, math and computer and, and on all that. Um, and you just enter in values and you, and you can, come up with your, oh, that's a conflict. Uh, nope, it's not, con it's conflict free. Excellent. Um, so, and again, that's a whole nother show. Um, yeah, a whole nother show in itself. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I like, I like helping people um, mm -hmm. get, make armory and get armory uh, awesome. submitted. So. I'm going to ask a simple question, but I'm pretty sure this question has been either asked or thought by a lot of people. Are roses really only reserved for those who have been queen? No. <laughs> um, it is the, uh, it's a specific type of rose um, that is not allowed. Um and, but like, I have a friend who, um, her, uh, device has three roses at the top, red roses. Um, and so, um, there's actually a, uh, appendix to our rules that lists the different charges that are not allowed. Um, so that can help you if you're, if you're, if you have a question about that, you can, look go through look up and say okay can i do um can i do an uh a, a link of chains no i can't do a link of chains a, a linked chains you can't but you can do an unbro a broken link of chains or you know so you can that that's different um and i was trying to find where it was um but it's in the appendix section of, of Cena, and uh, and it will give you that list, and they keep it updated and everything. So, all right. So our last question on the myths and misconceptions. So, 
do you have to be a know-it-all to be a herald? And by know-it-all, I don't necessarily mean. I, I do mean do you have to know everything there's to know about one thing. I mean, no one's omnipotent. But one, a couple of people might be. I'm not one of them. But so do you have to, you know, when you go into a subject, do you have to know everything about that subject before you become a herald? No. Nope. 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 I didn't know much about book heraldry at all before I had the, before I took the office of herald for the Shire of Beaufort, which that's my home group. And I knew people who could help me. And that's the nice thing about becoming a herald or jumping in going, hey, this looks like fun. Who do I talk to? And all that. And Master Kahalan was my contact. And he's the one who helped me find my name and all that. And he's like, okay, so here's this book and here's this book and here's this website and here's a bunch of links and here you go and all that. He helped me with mine too. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, it, th we have resources yeah. and, and we're a community. So we help each other. Mm -hmm. um, yep. There's, you know, so the, the, the better thing to know rather than the information is where to find the information or where to ask for the information. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go to a, a question from a, our, one of our live audience members. And it is, can you tell us about heraldry specific awards such as the Burning Trumpet and Herald Extraordinary? I mean, is that really a, the Herald Extraordinary? Because that sounds sort of like the League of Extraordinary Heralds. Um, it, is, it, is. it is. It is. It is. It is. It um, is. It is. Basically, a ex uh, Herald Extraordinary is a very, very special award that can be given um, by the Beacon Principal Herald. <laughs> and you don't, we don't necessarily have to consult with the Crown. We can, we will consult with the Society Laurel uh, um, to make sure that um, they are all right with that. And most of the time, they'll give us carte blanche, and then we'll we'll talk to their majesties and say, there's this person who has gone above and beyond. It's like above the kingdom burning trumpet um, for service. Um, one of those was Wu Darren. Um, she got hers when we hosted um, Known World Heraldic and Scribal Symposium. She had worked with the society staff as well as worked through the Herald's offices and the only one she had not been with <laughs> was Beacon. And, drinks in there, by the way. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's why I felt she was um, deserving of a Herald Extraordinary. You want to talk about the burning trumpet? Sure. Uh, and just a note, when when you are awarded Herald Extraordinary, you get a you get to choose a oh, title yeah. to uh, to to so you can be ex Herald. Um, she is Blackthorn Herald, I believe, is what her yes. her heraldic title is. So, and we have a few of those too um, in our mm -hmm. kingdom. I believe Master Alexander um, is a Herald Extraordinary. I'm trying to recall his title. Um, I know. Yes, um, and Mistress Bronwyn is the White Stag Herald. So you get a really cool title if it hasn't been used in another kingdom. <laughs> so you can't and, call it. Yeah. Um, and the Burning Trumpet, uh, which uh, was given out actually at last court last night. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an order of those persons um, who have enriched the um, Kingdom College of Heralds. And and uh, it's usually something that is um, in, uh, chosen in consort with Beacon, um, who says, you know, this, this person has done great things and has enriched our kingdom. And so we would like to, you know, give them this award to, to tell everyone about it. So, um, and it's really that's that's a fun thing that mm -hmm. Beacon gets to do. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, those are one, our only 
one live feed question because <laughs> our audience, though we love them greatly, are slackers tonight. Thank you, uh, Magic actually, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> or did they? Or did they ask give you all those myths ahead of time and feel like they'd already contributed? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I thought, see, I thought all the heralds were extra. <laughs> so, maybe they hold some back. I, I'm going to humbly suggest that your values for extra might be based on me, and I'm like a little more extra than extra. Hey, we yeah. want you. <laughs> all right. So, this is our, our portion where you guys get to cover anything that you think we may have missed or you wanted to, you were like, there was this one thing coming in, and you were like, I want to make sure we cover this. And Ulrich and Eric just went off to left field and did not cover the thing that you wanted covered. So if you've got anything on your last chance to cover before we go. Hmm. I can't on subject. Anything? Um, as be current beacon, I would like to just kind of reiterate um, and restate that if you are interested in heraldry, um, please, that's all we need to hear is say, I'm interested in heraldry, we'll help you with the rest. Um, and we'll get you started and find your niche. And um, so don't be scared. We're not that scary. We actually like to talk about heraldry a lot, mm -hmm. case in point. And um, we'll, and we just like to grow our, our community. So um, and you can reach out to, like I said, local, you can even reach out to myself, beacon at murderuse.org, um, or candle at murderuse.org, uh, to get started. For, for the record, I think every, you know, my personal opinion, every Night Inspire out there should be able to at least blazon their own bloody device. They should have a device and they should be able to blazon their blazon. own bloody That's device. Yep. When you when you step up to, to sign up for a list, and they're like, "What's what's your blazing?" You shouldn't go. Uh, <laughs> Find your local herald or a friend who's a herald. Have them blazing it out. If your arms are registered, put it on an index I, card and tape it to the back of your shield. Exactly, I'd say on the back of the shield. There you go. <laughs> so, oh, I'm and if you're gonna be in. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. You. I was just saying, um, for for tournaments, make sure you have a list shield. You don't yes. want to be stuck <laughs> with the My Little Pony yeah. Glitter Shield or Hello Kitty yeah. Glitter Shield. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like them. I mean, um, so <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I can blaze in my device. So I passed the Ulrich test. Now, now we're at the point where we like to give shout outs. And these shout outs can be to any uh, other shows that you're watching. They can be doing uh, for people doing good things in the kingdom. You like to point out just pretty much anyone who's impressed you with what they're doing, particularly during the uh, plague times. And since I always uh, lead in with this, I always get to add mine first. And my shout out tonight is to Duchess Maisie of Dunbarton. because She is a rock star who gets everything done in Trimeris. And it always filters over. And it's always about helping people, particularly new people, find where they're supposed to be and get them in garb, and get them to events and just make them generally feel more welcome. And that's the thing we should all be doing. And she should really be applauded for it. So here's you, maybe. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. My shout out is for the hardworking Beacon staff. That way we can drink one more time. You took mine. <laughs> sorry. You can always repeat it for emphasis. <laughs> He's not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it really is because Beacon is very much, you know, administrative in many ways. Um, so it, you, when you've got a great staff, um, then it makes your job easy and, it's my staff has been great during this time. And um, we, we've not only have we not stagnated, we've, we've d changed things, we've done things. Um, so uh, they're, they're, they're helping keep um, even my spirits up and, and keeping the kingdom's heraldic uh, endeavors going through these times. So I appreciate them. 
Hooray for phrasing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. You were funny. You were fine. Um, so I got a lot of shouts. My main shout outs are going to go from are going to go to the the part of this group that hosted this show on Saturday um, for four other three other uh, shows from around the known world. Uh, they hosted for Calbar for the Sisters Network um, and for um, Grace, under, and Grace under Pressure. Grace under fire. Grace, Grace under pressure. pressure. Okay. Right, um, and they uh, and, and they stepped up in a situation where I had committed us, and they jumped in with both feet when uh, it turned out that uh, other commitments had pulled me away. Um, and Jessica, who controls uh, the horizontal and the vertical of the known world, um, took point and ran things. Adriana stepped in and, and hosted. And I wanted to, you know, I'm going to thank them all later for what they do on did tonight, tonight in this show. But my shout out, was, I want to send that to them um, because I deeply appreciate them stepping in and doing that um, and do, providing a service to Irish Fair and uh, to the rest of the the other three shows that were that were represented as well. And I wanted to personally say, say thank you um, for for all of that. Um, and uh, I'm going to throw a shout out to Calbart's Corner, where you'll, you can see me on Sunday for a, a show on um, imposter syndrome, which I have. Uh, it's 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 a thing. So there you go. There's my shout out. Oh, and to every Herald out there, thank you. Thank you for your help and your your heart and your charity and your weirdness. Keep on being you. Huzzah. Huzzah. And, and, and Laurel staff in the OAR. Because <laughs> <laughs> I need a drink after that. All right. So rolling into the thank yous. I'd like to, we'd like to thank our guests, Mr. Fiora, Dame Flonit, uh, our support crew, Jessica Osprey, who, as I said, Controls the horizontal and the vertical. And if you're old enough to get that reference, welcome to the show. Um, Mistress Adriana for her work on the script. Uh, her ecstasy, Kat Katarina, for keeping us on time, which amazingly was not much of an issue tonight. You ladies absolutely rocked it. You were concise. You were to the point. You got good answers. And we flew through through questions and myths. And this there dropped a lot of knowledge on the kingdom. Um, thank you to uh, Lady Mergrid. For uh, doing our PR work, and finally to Lord Kikuchi, um, not finally, but to also Lord Kikuchi for uh, helping us get all of our, our tech work set up and you know, get tell me which mic to get. We're going to drop one of these on on Eric soon. Um, and uh, also a big thank you to the audience because without mm -hmm. you guys, it would just be the four of us sitting here talking to each other, which would have been fun and, and has been fun, but. <laughs> We get a little more um, other info out there that way. I'd also like to thank Laurel and the other Laurel for getting the LOAR out on time because I know how hard it is for Laurel and the other Laurel to get all of that done with the beacon cap. <laughs> Next week, we'll talk to, we don't know who yet. We're working on some scheduling issues. Bear with us. It could be me and Ulrich taking dares online. But we'll have something for you in a day or two. <laughs> really, that's 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 an issue right now. It could just be Eric and I going at each other. We'll see. All right. So, oh, oh, by the way, we have merchandise. You can go to www.hound-and-stag.com and buy that wonderful logo with with the the show name on the back. So do that. Your uh, any profits that we make for that will go for um, paying for the the Streamyard um, subscription and to maybe get Eric a mic. We'll see. Um, so it goes to support the support the show. And anything that we get past past that, we're going to give to Eric's uh, Save the Kittens. Um, the Kitty Cat Haven. Kitty Cat Haven. Thank you. And the other uh, anything 
we're going to split it between that and the uh, the uh, um, Gulf War social social at Gulf Wars. So now that I did that, if you're watching live, which if you're watching, you're watching live, because um, we don't want if you if you're dead, don't watch us. That's, that's <laughs> if you're dead, you have nothing better to do, and you should watch it. Yes. <laughs> right. Either way. Um, smash, uh, like, like, and follow up here, up here. Yeah. Up here for, for Facebook down here. Yeah. Yep. yep there, down here on YouTube, hit like subscribe and, and, and ring the bell. And you can catch us every Monday at six. And I have gone way off the, the thing. All right. Um, after the show, there will be a Zoom. That Zoom link we found on the Facebook page. On the Facebook, Facebook page, and it'll be posted by Graf and Katerina about now. I think that's it. I went way off. Not everyone. Night. Good night. Night. Hope everybody's doing well. And if I die in battle, tomorrow I will be home. Though it's 70 days march to there from Rome, but a soul travels swiftly on the night wind. And if I die in battle, I'll be home again.